Hi, I'm State Representative Kate Klunk. Earlier this month, the Hanover-based Aldis Brewing Company took home two ribbons, including the top prize blue ribbon, during the inaugural craft beer competition at the Pennsylvania Farm Show. This is a huge accomplishment, and I want to offer my sincere congratulations to everyone at Aldis for a job well done. Aldis won the blue ribbon in the pale ale category for its Lucky's Hoppy Pale Ale. It also took home a third place ribbon in the amber lager category for its red flannel lager. Again, congratulations to everyone at Aldis and keep up that tasty work. I urge you to continue to watch this video to learn more about the work being done at Aldis and about craft brewing in the 169th district. We are here at Aldis Brewing Company with the founder of Aldis, Jason Minninger. Jason, thank you so much for joining us today and letting us tour your beautiful facility. No problem, glad to have you. Well, thank you. So, Aldis, what is in the name Aldis? That is a question that we get asked all the time. Uh, short story is, uh, Aldis Minutius was a uh, 15th century Venetian printer. And people will ask, well, what does that have to do with craft beer? Nothing, uh, but the link that we make is, is best known for bringing uh, quality, uh, quality literature to the masses. Okay. Uh, specifically, he created the italic font, so when he printed books, you could fit more words per page, more lines per page, reducing the amount of paper needed. He found a way to print on cheap vellum and found a way to bring uh, Greek literature to the masses because even though the printing press had been created in the 15th century, unless you were part of the church or part of the government, you couldn't afford a book. So he was pretty much the modern day creator of uh, the, paper the paperback. Back. Okay, yeah. so, so that's bringing, bring, he brought literature to the masses. So with all this, you're trying to bring beer to the masses? Uh, craft beer to the masses. Uh, the connection that we make is he didn't change the literature. He made it accessible to people. It was still the same quality literature that was written. He didn't truncate it. It wasn't abridged. It was just what needed to be, what needed to be out there in people's hands. Uh, so. Uh, we're trying to do the same thing with craft beer and the fact that uh, we work very hard to make sure the beer is accessible by whether you're the biggest beer drinker in the world or someone who doesn't really have any kind of palate for craft beer, you should be able to come in here and try one of the beers and understand what we're, we're trying to do. You are the only local brewer here in the Hanover area that is a distributing brewery. Can you talk a little bit about that and, and, and why you're starting to focus on that distribution portion of the business? Uh, wholesale, wholesale beer was always kind of our, our mission here. Uh, we really thought we had a great product, specifically with our, the first beer that uh, Ryan and I brewed, which was the, the Blonde. Uh, we really thought it needed to be out there in people's hands. We see it as a great stepping stone beer into the world of craft beer, uh, as it's really well balanced and we just saw a market for it. Uh, in order to do that, you have to have a production facility because you can't bottle those one at a time in your basement and expect to make any money. So when we, when we actually uh, built the facility out, the whole purpose was production. Um, and now as we're getting into wholesale, uh, the dream's sort of coming to fruition and you know, our bottling line is running uh, you know, constantly and the fermenters are constantly full. So uh, that's sort of the plan. And the, the brew pub really kind of uh, was born from the brewery because as we're building the brewery, a billion people asked us, are you gonna have a brew pub? And we hadn't had a plan for that yet. And so this sort of became, uh, this was actually a secondary plan to the whole, the whole oldest plan. Well, I know I have been here before and, and you have some amazing beers, but my favorite is the American Blonde. And I find the American Blonde to be very accessible and bringing a very simple, good tasting beer to the masses. So can you talk a little bit about uh, the American Blonde and that being your flagship beer here at Aldis? Yeah, this was a beer that Ryan and I started brewing probably 10 years ago and we brewed it and rebrewed it. We had an idea of what we wanted. We wanted this beer that was not too malty, not too sweet, not too hoppy, had all of the essence of what a good beer is without having any of them really get out of, out of line. It's all about balance. And so we worked tirelessly rebrewing the blonde over and over again, different hops, different barley, different timing, all different uh, techniques until we finally got it to where it is now. And that is a smooth, balanced beer that offers really interesting fruit notes as it warms up, a mild bitterness, uh, no more bitter than any other light beer, which is the interesting part. It's also got some kick to it at 6%. Uh, it's definitely in that 
puts it up into that craft beer echelon of people that are expecting to get more bang for their buck. They want a full-bodied beer, they want a full-flavored beer, and they don't want to drink water. <laughs> so uh, that's really where, where, the, uh, you know, where the blonde is and what we always shot for, and it took, it took several years to get it there. Well, let's, let's taste you. the blonde. <laughs> So, so this is the American Blonde from Aldis. Um, it's one of my favorites. It's very easy drinking. Uh, it's great on a summer day. It's great on a nice cold day. Uh, but it's probably my favorite. It, it matches me and my lifestyle being an American Blonde. So cheers. Yep. It's delicious. So we're here in the production area. Jason, can you talk about what goes into making that beautiful American blonde that you're drinking today. Absolutely. So the whole process starts here in the milling room uh, uh, where we have our barley crusher. Uh, we put the bag, dump the bags of barley in. That's a two roll miller, busts up the barley, doesn't mill it down into, into a powder. It actually just breaks the barley into little pieces. Uh, we don't want it to get too small. So from the barley crusher, it goes up the grain elevator into the grain hopper. And from that area, it drops into the mash tun, and that's where we're gonna start the brewing process. We add the crushed barley and water heated to a very specific temperature into the mash tun, which begins the mash process. Uh, and when you talk about mash, what is, what's going on in the mash? So uh, during the mash process, the temperature of the water is activating enzymes in the barley uh, that, were, that began uh, their activation during the malting phase of creating the, barley, uh, the malted barley. So we're reactivating those and we're converting the starches in the barley kernels into sugar. Okay. Once we're done mashing, then we start the uh, Vorloft process. And uh, that consists of, uh, we, we flush the first runnings off the bottom of the mash tun back over the top of the grain bed that stops any small particles from flowing into the brew kettle. Uh, from there, then we begin the sparge process, which is trickling fresh hot water over the grain bed that we've, we've created here. And what that does is it rinses the sugars off the barley, the crushed barley, so we're able to pump it over into the boil kettle. At this point, it's called sweet wort. So once we have all of our sweet wort in the boil kettle, we, we, you know, we get the boil going, this is when we add our hops. And there's a couple different times you can add hops. You can add a bittering charge at the beginning, uh, an aroma charge at the end and all times in between to get different sort of hot profiles. So this, this is where the flavor in, infusion begins. Correct. That, this is where the balance is going to be, where you're going to add that nice bitter charge to balance the sweetness because the sweet wort, is, it tastes like the sweetest tea you've ever had. Uh, the, the, the hops are added to counterbalance that sweetness and add, add aroma and, and flavor. So once we've added the hops, we now have what's called bitter wort. Still not beer. From the boil kettle, we pump the, uh, the now bitter wort through a heat exchanger, which drops it from about 190 degrees to 69 degrees in a matter of seconds. And from there, it's pumped into one of the fermentation vessels. And those are the, the ones right here these behind you. Big tanks, yep. We got these and we're about to put in uh, two more double size tanks uh, probably in the next two weeks or so. Uh, as we're getting into wholesale, we find that we need more space. So once we get into the fermenter, we add our yeast and cap it off and usually before we're halfway done the cleaning process we're getting some bubbles uh, out of our blow-off buckets which i don't know if we have any they're active if we do i'll show you one but what it is it's the the yeast are getting happy in there they're eating the sugar and they're blowing off a lot of co2 um, it's actually enough pressure to blow from the top down through a bucket of water there's so much co2 pressure uh, that, that's created during the first uh, first couple days of fermentation once fermentation is finished uh, we then can take it to the finishing side of the brewery um, we have our, uh, our medical grade filter. Uh, we can either choose to filter the beer uh, for a clear product like the blonde, or we can, there's other techniques of, of refining the beer that don't use uh, the filter. And from there it goes into the finishing tank. And that's here on the left. That's a little short guy right there. That is where we're gonna add the CO2. Uh, we have a, a special device called a carbonation stone. Uh, we squeeze the CO2 through there. It makes it, the CO2 particles really small and allows the, the beer to more easily absorb the carbonation. And then from there, we either keg it or take it over to our bottling line. Okay, well, let's, let's go over and take a look at the bottling line. Okay. So we have the bottling line over here. So this is where you help bring beer to the masses. Right, so uh, right now what we're doing is we're finishing up a bottling run we did uh, yesterday. Uh, we, uh, we have our bottling line right here, which is actually will fill 
uh, cap and rinse the bottles and usually we send it off through the conveyor. Uh, we're doing things a little differently today. So uh, right now what we're doing is finishing the bottles by running them through the labeler and packing them onto the cases to go on pallets. Okay, so this is, we're bottling today the American Blonde. Yep. What we're drinking today. Absolutely. But from this, it usually goes on a pallet and gets ready to go out. Well, Jason, you have a number of beers here and it looks like you pretty much have something for everyone. You know, what what types of beers do you carry for our viewers out there so they know you, they might have something on tap or you might have something on tap that they might like? Yeah, well, yeah, you're right. We do have something for everybody. We do start with the simpler beers in the Blonde. And actually, if we go through our flagships from the Blonde to the Aromatic to the Wee, they actually get darker and more complex as they go down. And then we get into just some more, um, you know, we definitely like to have uh, some, a nice hoppy regimen um, for the hop heads out there that want a nice hoppy IPA. We offer some darker beers. We have some big old beers, our Red Rye, which is one of my favorites besides the Blonde. If our viewers are interested in stopping by here at Aldis, can you talk about your hours, when you're open, and when they can come in and, and taste all of your beers? Absolutely. We usually say as long as the door's open, we're, we're open. Uh, the actual pub hours are Wednesday through Saturday. Uh, Wednesday through Friday, it's 3 to 9. We're trying to get those hours changed to 11. We're working on that with the Penn Township Board. Uh, we're open Saturday from noon to 9. We're hoping to get that changed from noon to 11. Uh, other than that, if the door's open and you'd like to come in and try a sample, or you want to get a growler filled or a crowler filled or pick up a case, we're always, if the door's open, we're here. You're welcome to come in. So if the door is open, there's beer. Yep. Well, thank Pretty you. Much. Thank you so much, Jason, <laughs> no problem, for Kate. having thank us you. here today. And again, viewers at home, there are many options for every beer drinker or even the non-beer drinker here at Aldis.